Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got the first installment of the year of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out This Week in EDM, technically the past two weeks of EDM, because the first week there wasn't a whole ton, and so I wanted to just make a bigger combined list for the first two weeks of EDM. So we've got 37 tracks to talk about. Also, brand new Spotify playlist linked down below if you want to see all the songs in one easy spot. If you are a Spotify user, you can see uh, all the songs right there that I talk about. Just make sure you sort by recently added or date added so you can see it's in chronological order by week and so let's hop into it with the bad category songs that i thought were not great we've got 37 songs this week i would say overall there is a lot of good stuff but not crazy good stuff this uh these last two weeks it was a lot of just like good releases but nothing that blew anything out of the water um a lot of just like yeah good tracks but we'll start with the bad We've got Sudden Death, 10 Toad Anthem. Uh, first of all, the first 30 seconds sounds of sounds like the song is a joke, um, but like it really doesn't get much better. The synth sounds like a toad being flattened, and the jittery synths just do not help its cause. Am I missing something here? I, I don't get the to this, this track. I don't get it. I don't get it. And then we've got Nightmare, John Casey, and Pauline Her with In Your Eyes. The song had a lot of promise heading into the drop, but boy, is that lead melody just stale. Uh, the synth sounds like it's constantly giving out. Uh, the mixing just isn't all that great there either, so uh, I'll put it here in bad. Then we've got Excision and Sullivan King with Codename Reckless. I mean, what did you think you'd expect from this track? Uh, crashing bass lines and abrasive synths, uh, Sully screaming his head off, and it's just not all that solid to me. Um, nothing to really separate this from most of their own discographies. It's just a bit of a nothing burger that did not land well. Then we've got Benny Benassi and Constantin with Feel the Vibe. Uh, pretty boring and simplistic big room house track here. Nothing too interesting happening, um, and with a pretty okay mix. I think the bass is a little too hot. Um, it's just not that great of a track. Uh, but that's it for the bad category. Again, I thought a lot of stuff was uh, pretty pretty solid this uh, this these two weeks. We're heading into the meh category songs that I think are uh, are meh. Maybe you like them more than me. Uh, we got Subtronics and Res with Black Ice, uh, stylistically an empty track with uh, one melody line being the only real thing like happening here. Um, and I just wasn't really a fan of the track. I think um, it's. Yeah, I don't really like it for it being the more stylistically empty one, but I just think it just has a lack of style. I think this one just felt a little off to me, so. But not too bad. Uh, then, surprisingly, man, we've got Marshmallow and v Ven B. I want to say No Man's Land, a light and simple liquid drum and bass track from Marshmallow. Very serviceable with nothing egregiously bad. It's just nothing, uh, but in this case for Marshmallow, it works, uh, sort of, so. Then we've got Thirst with Bounce. I'm still not a huge uh, funk enjoyer. I I just think these tracks are too short. They don't go anywhere. Yes, you've got that iconic funk synth and atmosphere to it. But other than that, again, just not anything really happening with this track. So I could not differentiate this from the million other funk tracks out there personally. So... And then we got Cage with Howl, uh, the rattle double-sided double singles out now. Um, but yeah, this is a bass house cut with a lot of low end, as one might assume, but a bit too much for my liking. Um, it's cutting out a lot of the melody, which I think uh, mixing-wise, so it's a neat track, but nothing special. Then we got uh, Chill, Sequa, and Never Sleep with Voyage. Uh, I know Sleep or Speed House uh, isn't the most variety-filled genre, um, but I, I swear I've heard this track exactly. Like, I feel like I've heard this drop exactly. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad one, but it's just one that I feel like I've, I've heard before, so I'm not really going to go back to it. Then we got Must Die with Dallas, the Automate remix. Uh, the Vampire Weapon Crimson remixes are out now. Um, didn't mind the tone and production of this remix, but just felt it was a little bit too messy for my liking. Uh, there wasn't any real direction I feel like the remix was trying to go. We just felt like there's a lot of competing sounds and styles all over, all over the place, despite me liking those sounds for the most part. So it just lands here in meh. We've got Nanobi with All I Want. Uh, I do love seeing Nanobi and Uplifting Trap, uh, Trance, sorry, Uplifting Trance on Monster Cat, uh, but this track just uh, feels a little bit too dated for my liking. And then we've got Odd Kid Out, Heckler, and Scrofizer with Original Steppa. Very bizarre track, uh, just two minutes long. I really adored the first half of this track, though. Um, loaded with tons of energy and those rap vocals. It, it, dirty drop. There was just it was had a lot of stuff going for it. Um, but the second half was uh, very messy. I thought the synth just 
the synth sound kind of ruined the drop and then all the random samples kind of thrown in just killed the vibe for me, but uh, I didn't mind it. Then we got Sultan and Shepard with Un, uh, a solid progressive house track with its kind of standard sound design and long movements you get from Sultan and Shepard. Uh, but those movements didn't really go anywhere. I thought it was just a kind of cookie cutter progressive house song. Then we got If Found, Vance, and Birdie Scott with Stay. The Social Suicide Pact EP is out now uh, from these three producers, actually. So this is a, a big collaboration EP. But uh, this track is a rockin', high-energy drum and bass track that uh, has a bit of a happier overtone to it. But um, yeah, it's not your heavy bass line driven D&B that is normally like a, a Reaper style song, um, but still very palatable, I think, for uh, for how heavy it is and rockin' it is. A, a more approachable. I'm interested to hear the rest of this EP for sure. And then we're moving into the good category with 23 songs in good. A ton of stuff came out that I thought was pretty solid. Uh, we've got uh, Jay Ray, I want to say, with uh, Heart. Um, the Lotus LP is out now. And uh, honestly, to be very straight up with you, um, this guy reached out to me randomly and just said, hey, you should listen to my new album. I'm a new producer. And I was like, sure, I'll give it a shot. And I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it had a great kind of garage trap sound to it. Um, it's not a super complex trap, but or track, but I do think um, it, it was good. I, I thought I liked a lot of the soundscape and production elements and the ideas that were in the track. I thought the mixing could have been a little bit cleaner, but um, overall, I was very impressed with it. And I did like the Lotus EP, uh, LP, so I go listen to that. And we got Fabian Mazur with All Again, a light trap sound design uh, with one of the most carefree tones of a track I've heard in a while. And it's got a decent amount of charm despite the production being fairly linear, um, but enough that I uh, enjoyed it. Uh, this one reminds me a lot of the OK and Fox Stevenson collab on Monster Cat's uh, Lighthouse. It reminds me a lot of that track. Uh, this one does. Then Bishu featuring Dabble with Ener Enemy, uh, another bright and cheerful Bishu cut from his upcoming Monster Cat record. Um, a little more simple than I typically love from Bishu, but uh, it's a nice little track with another carefree kind of tone to it. Then we've got Niels Hoffman and the Kite String Tangle with Holding Me Back. A simple progressive house track with a new LP coming out on Anjuna Beats from Niels Hoffman. And um, yeah, this is more of an atmosphere track and a little bit more relaxing, simplistic tone with, uh, with nice movements and light production. So I did enjoy it. Then we've got Alan Walker, Putri Arani, and Peter Elias. Uh, who I Am is the name of the track. I'm sure I butchered all those names. Um, shockingly solid Alan Walker track here. It's got a bit more of a Moomba beat to it, um, which is out of the norm for Alan Walker for sure. But I really like the vocals. I thought it had a great like Middle Eastern vibe to it. Um, solid tonal movements with great payoffs. I thought this track worked really well. We've got More Plastic and Halvorsen with Sunrise, uh, a longer drum and bass track here with the, with an extended third movement, uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, but it is standard by kind of standard drum and bass means, uh, but it's a great cut to kick the ear off with, I would say. Then we've got Sudden Death with Forgive, Forget. I did not like the uh, the Toad Anthem, Ten Toad Anthem, but this one uh, I actually enjoyed. I've been dogging on Sudden Death a ton lately, but I genuinely enjoy this. It's got a great melding of abrasive dubstep synths and melodic elements um, with very stylistic layers of distortion all throughout. So I don't just hate Sudden Death. I think this is a, actually a really solid track. I just haven't been liking this stuff lately. Then we got Stonebank and Amel with Afraid of Love. Uh, nice to hear a first release of the year with it being uh, Stonebank. It's kind of a tradition that is alive, but just now on Nerd Nation rather than Monster Cat. But uh, yeah, this is a solid, serviceable, happy, hardcore track um, with, yeah, I just like that. It's a tradition that this is a bit of a thing, but not the most out there for Stonebank, uh, but it does definitely put a smile on my face. We got Crystal Skies and Sounder with Growing Pains, embracing a more strictly color-based sound than ever before. Uh, Crystal Skies jumps into 2040, 2024 just swinging. Um, bright production, solid vocals. This is a highlight and definitely more memorable track uh, from Crystal Skies as of late for me. We've got One True God and Eddie with Not Enough. As one would expect from these two, this track's got a bit of a dark atmosphere with a bit of a mid-tempo style to it. Um, there's just this kind of one synth note that follows the whole track in a through line and kind of keeps that haunting guise, especially uh, paired with those uh, whispered vocals. And so I thought it uh, worked well. 
Then we've got Drinks On Me with Grateful. Um, the Freedom EP is out now from Drinks On Me. And uh, this track, wow, uh, very intimate track uh, for Drinks On Me as he shares his experience with um, with sexual assault. Um, the track is mainly him recounting his experiences and the slow healing process that the damage had done um, as the song kind of goes into pretty explicitly kind of sort of what happened. Um, so this is a obviously deeply personal song for him, and I commend him for his ability to be as vulnerable and raw on a track like this. Um, so yeah, great track. Then Karma Fields and Kinder with Behavior, a simple house track for a kind of um, club setting with simple lyrics and repetitive beat. Not the flashiest of tracks, but it works well. Karma Fields is doing good work here. Then we've got Blank, Rival, and Casey with Heaven. Um, I thought this was a great balance of Blank's two distinctive dubstep styles, his more kind of crashing, heavy dubstep and his more melodic side. Um, Casey's vocals are great as well. All around, I thought it was a solid cut and some of the best mixing I think I've heard from both Blank and Rival. Then we got Lemater with Pixel Heart. Um, Lemater is back and with a bit of a like jittery house track, um, unlike most of what we've heard in the past from them. So this is a nice change up of style. Uh, it's also um, subsequently more energetic, I think, as well, too, than we get from Lemater. A lot of times it's a little bit more down or a little bit more like it comes in waves. But um, this is kind of just like it just goes and goes and goes and goes. Um, yeah, there's less explicitly funk elements throughout that Lemater likes to put in. But uh, this is still a, a very solid song. Then we've got Bad Computer and Ryan Koss with 4D. Um, some classic electro house from Bad Computer. Uh, I enjoyed the more prominent keyboard chords throughout. And that absolutely just crushing, just compressed uh, second drop that worked really well stylistically. I thought it was a, a great switch up of, of the sound that was still very core to the bad computer sound. So then we've got Ellis Dream and uh, KO with the Wrecked Effin remix. Uh, Effin absolutely blew this remix out of the water with his signature kind of one-two dubstep style. Uh, pretty much from the get-go, this track just gives it all. Uh, Effin has been on a tear as of late, and this is just another great addition to uh, an already stellar discography and a great start for his year. We've got Jamie XX with It's So Good. Uh, always a pleasure to hear more Jamie XX. This song is everything I love about Jamie with the building movements, um, despite the track being so simple. Uh, it's got incredible mixing. It's light and airy and an always moving and constantly moving on to the next thing style track. And I just love it. Then we got Kazuki and Mr. Fiji Ouija with Wasted, starting off the year with another really solid garage trip hop track. Uh, punchy snares and kicks make it for a bit more of like a, a girthier track, I would say. Lots of energy and doesn't prolong its welcome too much. So uh, it's uh, it's it's another solid one. Then we got uh, <laughs> Eliminate and Flux Pavilion featuring Mish with Dawn. What the heck? Seemingly out of left field, the song comes out with this style um, that is so far for anything uh, Eliminate and Flex Pavilion have done as of late. Um, it's a like, happy-go-lucky, pseudo-happy hardcore track with bright melodies and breezy vocals from Mish. It's just like a... It's a weird one that I don't hear from either of these uh, two producers, but um, I, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it, so... We got Ramesses B with Overdose, uh, a drum and bass track with a funk, uh, or sorry, a funk overtone to it. Um, and uh, yeah, all those kind of funk elements are there, but without its kind of more iconic synth lead. Uh, I think it's a beautiful melding of the two genres. Um, there's lots happening at the same time without it being too overwhelming. Um, yeah, this is a, a great, this is probably one of the better, like, it's not really explicitly a, a funk track, but one of the best styles of funk I've heard ever maybe for me personally and then we got gyro field ones and somehow the uh, faint glow of bravery lp is out now and this is a more underground idm style record but uh one that's uh, definitely not too out there for a majority of people um i think this uh yeah i think what people would be maybe turned away from this style of kind of more underground idm or drum and bass style track i i think you actually would enjoy this one quite a bit i love the dichotomy of the lively vocals and the just deep bass kicks um and also those kicks do get cut out pretty quickly but i think stylistically in a way that uh really brings out the vocals a lot more so i like this track uh quite a bit 
And our runner-up track of the week is Meat and Sam Gallatry. I'm sure I butchered both of those names uh, with Darling Drive. This is a groovy track. Uh, it's simple and effective, and it feels like it could easily be one of the songs of the summer for me this upcoming summer. Uh, Sam and Meat's uh, team up for a perfectly yeah, just a blending of style and charm and like passion and just cruising tones. Big fan of this track. And the number one track of the week, in my opinion, of the last two weeks of medium of the start of the year is Guy Arthur's Falling from the kickoff start of Chompo season two. Um, and what a beautiful kickoff it is. Uh, it's an Electro House banger with intensity that very is reminiscent of Bad Computer, actually. Um, solid vocals with big crashing movements. I think this is probably one of my favorite Guy Arthur tracks to date yet. And so, uh, but yeah, that has been this week in EDM. Let me know what you think of any and all of the songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Motel Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.